Text. Cape Cod National Seashore presents the State of the Seashore, a Prezi PowerPoint presentation presented by Brian Karlstrom, Superintendent, and Pete Eisenbarth, President of the Friends of the Cape Cod National Seashore. Image. National Park Service Arrowhead. Image. Two men appear on screen side by side in a virtual meeting recording. Hi, everyone. I'm Cape Cod National Seashore Superintendent Brian Karlstrom. I'm joined by Pete Eisenbarth, president of Friends of Cape Cod National Seashore. And we're happy to chat today about what's been happening at the seashore over the past year or so, and to forecast some of our 2021 projects and activities. For the past many years, myself and Superintendent George Price before me provided a seashore update each fall at the Salt Pond Visitor Center. It's always been a great opportunity to get together, together to share what's been happening at the seashore and to hear from you with your questions, curiosities, and concerns. Well, we all know COVID-19 changed that and we weren't able to provide our regular State of the Seashore update. So we're switching to this virtual format until we can talk again in person. And I'm thrilled to have Pete here with me. Uh, since 1987, the Seashore and Friends have worked together to improve the park, protect resources, and provide for enjoyment. Friends provide support through volunteerism, sponsorship of education and interpretive programs and funds for projects that are beyond the seashore's ability to provide. I've asked Pete to share a few words on the friend's recent activities. Pete. Thanks, Brian. Hello, everyone. I'm Pete Eisenbarth, president of the Friends of the Cape Cod National Seashore. The role of the Friends is to support, promote, and help protect the resources that make up the Cape Cod National Seashore. And those goals are both rewarding and fun to pursue. Just in the last three years, the Friends have raised funds through your memberships and generous donations to renovate the exterior of the historic Peniman House and to repair the beautiful Red Maple Swamp Trail, both at Fort Hill, as well as to replace a large section of boardwalk at the unique Atlantic White Cedar Swamp Trail near the Marconi site in Wellfleet. Just this year, the Board of the Friends has committed $40,000 to fund the Seashore's 2021 Shorebird Intern Program. The interns will work alongside the park's professional staff, performing vital endangered shorebird protection and monitoring work, which fits right in with one of the National Park Service priorities for wildlife protection. Many interns move on to paid positions with the National Park Service, or they return to school for advanced degrees. This program is a win, win, and win for the park, the interns, and the birds. The friends also rely on volunteers. For example, when you hike any of the marked trails on seashore property, you're benefiting from our trails maintenance crews. These crews consist of volunteers who periodically walk the trails armed with tools to keep the vegetation at bay and to report any more serious hazards to the park's professional maintenance crew. And since January, the smoke you may have seen rising from various park properties on any Tuesday is evidence of the Friends Cut, Pile, and Burn crew. Under the watchful eye of Dave Crary, the park's fire management officer and his fire crew, Friends volunteers clear undergrowth and small trees from around park structures and restore some of the magnificent vistas that are enjoyed by visitors to the seashore. The Friends also help sponsor summer programs, such as the Cape Symphony at the Seashore concert and other performance events at the Salt Pond Visitor Center theaters, evening concerts at Herring Cove Beach in Provincetown, and the annual Science in the Seashore Symposium. The Board of Directors of the Friends are hopeful that we will be able to resume some of these programs this summer, but it will be some time before we can make those decisions as the COVID data allows. If you would like to join the Friends or donate, please visit our website at fccns.org. On behalf of the Friends of the Cape Cod National Seashore, thank you for your generous support and for your attention to this important presentation by Park Superintendent Brian Kallstrom. It's all yours, Brian. Thank you, Pete. Well, in preparing for this program, we invited you through Facebook, and Instagram to suggest ideas on topics you wanted to hear about. And we were thrilled to receive many suggestions showing that so many of you have a passion for this special place. 
We've tried to incorporate all your ideas and add some specific questions uh, to be answered in the middle. And then again, at the end of the presentation. But if this video doesn't answer all your questions, feel free to ask on Facebook and we'll be sure to get the team right on it and respond to those as quickly as we can. Uh, we will be uploading the video to our YouTube channel, so make sure to share. Now we're gonna walk through presentation of the entire year that was like no other at the seashore. Let me change over to sharing my screen. All right. Text, State of the Seashore, a year in review and look ahead, presented by Brian Kallstrom, Superintendent. Presentation overview screen, list of topics. Let's dive in, a year unlike any other. Interpretation and education, special events. Q&A break, new exhibits, park projects, research and science, safety, and questions. Background image, a tree branch resting on the beach with waves lapping up in the background. So let's take a look and walk through what happened in the past year, learn a little bit about the future, and establish a baseline for what the seashore is all about. Let's dive in. Text, quick facts, six public beaches, two visitor centers, 24 miles of roads, 36 miles of hiking slash biking trails, 40 miles of coastline, nearly 44,000 acres of land and water, over 80 historic structures, over 4 million visitors annually. Image, map of Cape Cod National Seashore. So a couple quick facts. We've got six public beaches, 24 miles of roads, nearly 44,000 acres of land, and over 4 million visitors annually. That's as many or more than Yellowstone or Rocky Mountain or Glacier National Park. We get a lot of visitors out here and we know you're here to enjoy it. Text, natural resources, more than 570 species of fish, amphibians, birds, reptiles, and mammals can be seen in Cape Cod, including five species of seals, 13 species of sharks, five species of seasonal sea turtles, and 80 species of nesting birds. Cape Cod National Seashore supports 31 federally protected animal species and 52 state protected plant and animal species. Image of a bullfrog and a piping plover. The natural resources are what people come to see and check out. Over 570 species of fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals can be seen in Cape Cod, including five species of seals, many sharks, including the white sharks, which you're gonna hear more about later. And we protect 31 animal species and 52 state protected plant and animal species. Text, by the numbers, 180 to 200 employees during the summer, 60 to 80 employees year round, over 500 volunteers contributing over 22,000 hours, six seashore beaches, 22 town managed beaches, $49 million in deferred maintenance, $6.48 million operating budget, $7.87 million maintenance budget. Image, visitors fishing at the beach. A few things by the numbers, a couple more quick facts. We've got about $8 million a year to maintain the park. 49 million in deferred maintenance that we're working hard to address. 28 beaches total. 22 of those are managed by the towns. We do it, as Pete said earlier, with a lot of volunteer support, many of those from the Friends with over 22,000 hours per year. And we can't do it by ourselves. Text, partnerships, Friends of the Cape Cod National Seashore, Modern House Trust, Nosset Light Preservation Society, Provincetown Community Compact, Hosteling International, Truro Historical Society, Center for Coastal Studies, Need Academy at Pamet Learning Center, Outer Cape Artists and Residence Consortium, Eastern National, Shore Operation and Highland Light Tours, Image of Partner Logos. We of course work with our official friends of Cape Cod National Seashore as our fundraising partner, but we have many others that help us to accomplish the mission of the seashore and help enhance your experiences, including Eastern National that runs our bookstores, and helps provide tours at the Highland Light when it's open. Uh, the Center for Coastal Studies up in Provincetown partners with us on so many things, including uh, monitoring seals, 
monitoring the shoreline. The Truro Historical Society has a significant presence at the Highland Light area and runs the uh, Highland House Hotel, which uh, historically was a hotel, but is now that functions as the town museum. To name a few, and of course, the Cape Cod Modern House Trust helps to preserve a number of homes in that iconic artistic style of mid-century modern architecture. Well, past year has been one like no other for all of us. Text, a year unlike any other. In response to the COVID-19 outbreak, Cape Cod National Seashore closed public buildings, including restrooms on March 16, 2020. Beaches, trails, and parking areas remain open to benefit mental and physical health. Cape Cod National Seashore uh, modified its operations. We continued to adapt and recover as best as we could throughout the entire year. And we thank you and each and every one of you for being so understanding and working through this together. We may kept the beaches, trails, and parking areas open so everyone could uh, maintain their mental health. Text. Stress relief. National Seashore staff stress the benefits of outdoor recreation and appreciation of nature as means to improve health. So how do we safely promote this during a pandemic? Image. Entrance signage at Nosset Marsh Trail. As they so choose and just get a chance to get out and recreate. Um, how do we safely promote getting out there during the pandemic? Well, you may have seen the signs that clearly communicated our messaging. Safety messaging. The Seashore's priority through messaging is to ensure the safety of its visitors, employees, volunteers, and partners while recreating. Throughout the park, social distancing reminders are posted along with recreating responsibility with pets and pack it in, pack it out signage. Image. COVID-19 regulation signage. Our, high pri our priority was maintaining everybody's safety and trying to slow the spread of the virus through this. Of course, the things you've heard and practiced so often throughout the entire pandemic, wearing masks, staying home if you feel sick, staying at least six feet apart, 12 feet apart on the beaches between groups to give yourself enough room to walk back and forth, washing your hands, covering your mouth when you sneeze or cough, all the things that have just become part of our everyday habits. Text, safety measures, responsible beach behavior by visitors, reduced tram capacity, Outdoor Visitor Center Operations, Specific Restroom Cleaning Protocols, Image, COVID-19 Beach Safety Rules and Regulation Signage. And specific safety, uh, um, specific safety measures we put into uh, operations for at the beach with the different behaviors that you can see in front of you, reducing the tram capacity, Visitor center operations were focused outdoors and still are, and we increased our restroom cleaning and enhanced how we were doing it and kept them open throughout the, throughout most of the pandemic experience and will continue to do so into the future. Text, interpretive and educational programs. Image, a range of greets visitors and mask. Image, our virtual visitor center is open signage. Image, QR code posted on trail brochure box. Our interpretation and education efforts continue. We can see a ranger, ranger at Province Lands Visitor Center making sure that folks are uh, hearing about the park, but doing so in a safe manner, um, exhibiting social distancing. We kept the visitor centers open um, and had a virtual visitor center presence on the web that many of you checked out. And we, and we, stood up our, jump back for a second, our QR coding again, so people could take a quick snapshot and get a guided walk on their phone. Text, story walk, copyright. In collaboration with the Outer Cape Libraries, hiking day story walk on the small swamp trail. Story walk at the Beach Forest Trail in Provincetown. Image, ranger post story walk signage at trailhead. Image, young visitors point out story walk signage on trail. And we added the story walks that people could go out and enjoy at their own pace. By checking out the guides, they could get out there and learn as they were going.
techs, special events, healthy parks, healthy people, run, walk, bike, virtual event. Payomat Drive-In. Image. Cars line up at the Payomat Drive-In. Image. Park staff participate in Healthy Parks, Healthy People Challenge. And we did have a few special events as well. We did a virtual Healthy Parks, Healthy People Run, Walk, Bike event. And Payomet stood up an outdoor drive-in experience at the ball field at the Highland Center. Text. Q&A break. Now we're going to cover a few questions. Um, we had a lot of questions that came in about ORVs and maintaining public access while we've got the shorebirds that we must protect. And the ORVs where the corridor is, is highly coincident with where the shorebirds need to be and where their habitat is. So what we've done is made sure that we maintain access as we can, depending upon what, how the birds are presenting and what presenting themselves and how the shoreline is set up. And that's a really challenging task that we have several rangers working on each and every day. We have biologists that are on the ATVs that you may see out there monitoring the birds, making sure we know where they're at, to keep their nests as safe as possible. And rangers, uh, protection rangers out looking at the shoreline to determine where we can site, have which sections of the corridor we can have open because the conditions are changing continuously. We keep that information posted on the web and our our office for ORVs will be opening on as normally scheduled on April 10th this year. And we hope to have the corridor open as much as we possibly can while simultaneously protecting the piping plovers and our other shorebird species. And we've also had a lot of questions about the bike trails at Cape Cod National Seashore. Some of the first bike trails ever established within the National Park System are right here at Cape Cod. In the last couple of years, we've been working to improve those because bicycle accidents are number one accidents that occur in the seashore. Uh, we ask people to always be as, recreate on their bikes as safely as possible. Um, and to help enhance that, we completely resurfaced and reestablished the head of the Meadow Trail in 2019 and added an improved surface on the Coast Guard Truro, the Coast Guard Beach and Truro's connection to head of the Meadow Beach. If you haven't checked those sections out, I encourage you to get out there and do so. And we also work closely with the towns on establishing multi-use uh, shared spaces. You'll see sharrows all over the place. We help to contribute to that master plan for bicycle and pedestrian use throughout the Outer Cape and work with the towns to implement it. And there's an eight tenths of a mile segment that was opened recently in Truro following that plan. Let's get back to the presentation. Text, new outdoor exhibits, image, Wampanoag use of resources wayside at Skiff Hill in East Ham. Image, Ranger stands next to a lighthouses and life-saving wayside at Province Lands Visitor Center in Provincetown. During the past year, we had some new exhibits that we are proud to have for people to enjoy. At Skiff Hill, there's a new uh, wayside that explains and shares how the Wampanoags use the resources uh, historically as the first people of Cape Cod National Seashore. And we uh, added a a wayside at the Province Lands Visitor Center. Here's Ranger Jill uh, sharing her wayside with us. And she uh, is out there in normal years, uh, sharing her knowledge of the lighthouses and life-saving at Province Lands and what an important role Cape Cod has with the life-saving service and ultimately the establishment of the Coast Guard. Text, park projects, Highland Light, Image, three side-by-side -side images of Highland Light construction in progress, lighthouse covered in scaffolding. Image, Highland Lighthouse wrapped in scaffolding. And we always have park projects to improve what's happening at the seashore. At Highland Light, it's been wrapped in scaffolding and sheathing over the course of the past year for much of it. And that's so that the interior of it can be improved so that we can recode it and to reestablish ventilation throughout the cylinder of the tower so that it can be maintained in better condition than it has in the past. When it was moved in 96, all, all that ventilation was sealed up 
And that was really um, challenging for the tower to try and stay in good condition because of all the moisture that was accumulating in it. And the renovation that's going on will correct that. So right now, take a take a look while we still have it in scaffolding because you don't get to see that very often. This is kind of the same thing that happened with the Statue of Liberty back in the day and uh, with the Washington Monument when it was repaired right after the earthquake. So we've got our version of that going on with Island Light right now. Text, park projects, Province Lands Visitor Center, accessible ramp, images, freshly paved accessible ramp adjacent to the Visitor Center building. Uh, province Lands, we have a new all um, accessibility ramp that's nearly complete. Uh, this is right after it was paved earlier this spring. And it, by the time it, it opens, uh, Province Lands Visitor Center opens in May, there'll be new railings along it as well. That makes it easier for everybody to access Province Lands Visitor Center. Text, park projects, restroom renovations. Image, interior of the recently rehabilitated men's room at Marconi Beach. Image, bathroom renovations at the Salt Pond Visitor Center. Image, project site at park headquarters for an eco-friendly septic installation. And we have a number of projects going on for restroom renovations. We, uh, Marconi has been upgraded. Salt Pond is undergoing renovations, both interior and exterior. That's the most utilized restroom on the Outer Cape, only one open year round. And we are improving the septic system at park headquarters in response to our role as environmental stewards, and that's underway as we speak. Text, park projects, Nosset Light Bathhouse Remodel. Image, rendering of the Nosset Light Bathhouse Complex. Image, previous version of the Nosset Light Bathhouse from the 1960s. Image, demolition of old bathhouse. Image, construction progress of new bathhouse. And the Nosset Light Bathhouse. This is a complete renovation of the Nasset Light complex. Uh, the previous one was getting precariously close to the edge and we took an opportunity to remove it while it was still safe to do so. That was about three years, four years ago now. And we've designed and are in the process of building an entirely new bathhouse complex that looks very similar architecturally to the restroom and bathhouse complex up at Herring Cove or Excited about this project, looking forward to open it for you to enjoy and, ex and continue experiencing Nosset Light Beach and all that it has to offer. Text, research and science, shorebird management plan implementation with support from the Friends of Cape Cod National Seashore, water quality, shoreline change, shark research, Herring River restoration, collaborative science. <laughs> Research and science is what we base all of our management decisions on here at Cape Cod National Seashore. We touched on shorebirds during the questions and answer session. Text, shark research, image of science research partnership logos. Uh, we also are doing a lot of shark research right now in collaboration with the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, USGS Salem State is doing a sociological study on sharks. Of course, the Division of Marine Fisheries and the Center for Coastal Studies are all doing various levels of research on sharks, both in the near shore environment with their continuing tagging programs, with their monitoring programs, with cameras we put up to better understand the near shore environment. All that is occurring in collaboration with one another and with the seashore so we can better understand how the sharks are reestablishing themselves in the marine ecosystem and helping to keep kick Cod National Seashore Wild. Uh, it's one of the most popular questions we get is asking, where can I go to see a shark? Text, Herring River Restoration Project, the largest coastal wetland restoration in the Gulf of Maine. 80% of the Herring River floodplain is within the park. 1,100 acre restoration, 800 acres of which are within Cape Cod National Seashore. Mill Creek Water Control Structure. Image, aerial view of the Herring River project area. And the Herring River restoration project is underway. Um, we are in the middle of the planning process and permitting process for this with a number of collaborators, including USGS, Friends of Herring River. 80% of the Herring River floodplain is within the park. 
And it's currently in a state of impaired water quality. We can't tolerate that. We're working really hard with all those partners to correct it so that 800 acres of it can be restored to a highly valuable, fully functional wetland estuary. And the Park Service piece of that is the Mill Creek water control structure that will enable the construction of the Chiquesset Neck Dike to be reconfigured as a bridge so that we can restore the 800 acres of the Herring River so that herring can return, so that shellfish can return, so that we enhance the habitat and recreational values for that entire watershed. Tax Collaborative Science, U.S. Geological Survey, National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, Center for Coastal Studies, Friends of the Cape Cod National Seashore, Friends of Herring River, Barnstable County, Images of Park Partner Logos. Here we go, back to all the collaborative science we have going on. Um, again, many of these are working with us on sharks, but other things in so many different ways. We work very closely with NOAA and Mass Fisheries on seals. And we are also working with Friends of Herring River on the Herring River Restoration Project and monitoring it and understanding the hydrology with the Friends of Cape Cod National Seashore continuing to support the um, Dickerson Fellowships for uh, graduate students to come in and do additional research within the seashore. It's a competitive process. And our friends at the Center for Coastal Study are involved in shark research, water quality monitoring, and our geo coastal morphology as well. Text, park safety, shark safety, ocean safety, wildlife safety, bike safety. Image, Cape Cod National Seashore Environmental Safety Information signage, poison ivy, year-round deer tick habitat, mosquitoes can transmit diseases. Safety is an important part of all of our park operations, and we want you to have the safest uh, experience as possible, but be aware there are environmental hazards that every visitor should be aware of. Poison ivy is out there and prevalent throughout the seashore. If you see leaves of three, let them be. Deer tick habitat is everywhere along the seashore, especially in grassy areas. Make sure to to do a tick check every time you've been outdoors along the seashore just to make sure and follow and follow all the preventative measures. And if you do have a tick that ends up being attached, um, see your doctor as you feel necessary. And beware of mosquitoes as well. Um, there are diseases that are transmitted by mosquitoes that are present in the seashore. So it's always a good idea to wear uh, long sleeves and insect repellent. Text. Shark safety efforts, two significant shark bite incidents, one of which was a fatality, 2018. Shark safety meetings, 10 administrators, ongoing listening sessions, shark science symposium, implemented shark safety signs, stop the bleed kits and emergency phones at each national seashore beach, continue to analyze and implement science-based actions, continue multimedia public awareness efforts, supporting shark research efforts, image, shark warning park signage, image, Purple shark flag. Shark safety. We work really closely with the towns on the Outer Cape to message consistently. The purple shark, the purple flag with the white shark on it has been flying for many years. And of course, we have the warning sign that lets people know that it is a danger to go in the water here, to know your risk when entering the water. Um, the Shark Science Symposium. Uh, occurs annually where we compare and collaborate with all of the researchers. We have an annual shark safety event that also includes an ocean safety awareness component. Image, ocean safety graphic, illustration of potential hazards at the beach. And ocean safety is all shared on this one infographic. Always remember the thing that is most dangerous in the ocean and that our lifeguards spend the most time responding to our rip currents and the near shore break. A lot of information on this uh, infographic, but follow each and every one of these and chances are you'll have a safe, fun experience while at the shore. Always listen to the lifeguards. Text, wildlife safety, 
Visitors have the ability to help protect our wildlife. As a rule of thumb, stay 50 yards or 150 feet from seals and other wildlife and keep at least 100 yards or 300 feet from whales. Even if wild animals approach you, be sure to give them plenty of space. A curious seal pup might approach on its own, but its mother is likely to be nearby and may see your interaction as a threat. Image reads, don't be that guy. Man with a camera is squished under an elephant seal. And wildlife safety, you don't want to be that guy. Stay away from the seals, at least 50 yards. That's 150 feet or three school buses. Um, if the animals approach you, because sometimes they're curious, make sure to give them plenty of space. Uh, it, it's our beach to enjoy, but it's also the beach that the seals like to enjoy. And there's other wildlife out there as well. The best rule when you see wildlife is to observe from a distance. And if they approach you, do your best to try and maintain that distance. Um, all kinds of fun to see through wildlife observation activities out there, but do it safely. Don't be that guy. Text, questions. And last but not least, a few questions to close us out. Um, the Herring River restoration, We've got a lot, several questions on that. I wanna elaborate on it a little bit further for everybody. Let me get back on camera. There. Thanks. I hope that presentation helped you learn a little bit more about the shore and answer many of your questions. But let's go into the Herring River a little bit further. Why is this so important to the National Seashore? Well, I can tell you that there's two principal reasons. One is a part of the shore that the seashore that is imper imperiled and impoverished and from a habitat value standpoint more than any other area. The water quality in there is very, very poor to a point that it's actually been declared an impaired water quality resource. That is something the Park Service just doesn't tolerate. We want to correct that so that the herring can return, hopefully in their historic numbers, so that we can lift the bans on shellfish harvesting that occurred just downstream from the Herring River that you cross at Neck Dyke and to enhance recreational resource values. Those are things that are critically important to the seashore. We're working really hard to advance that project with all of our partners to get that done. And we had questions about bottle filling stations around the seashore. We do have a few, but we are soon to have many more. They're gonna be installed this week. So as you see them out there, please reuse a, a refillable water bottle so that we can help to reduce our footprint and, and help to minimize marine debris that help, tends to accumulate along our shores. And with that, we're going to call it a day. Pete, could you please come back on camera and we'll say goodbye to everybody? I want to say thank you to everyone for listening and to be safe out there as we continue to uh, go through our pandemic ordeal together, recreate responsibly. Get out there and enjoy your seashore. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for your support. Bye-bye. I know. Text. Cape Cod National Seashore 2020 Operations. Slideshow of images of park staff and visitors in mass working and enjoying Cape Cod National Seashore over light music. Final slide reads, be well and stay safe.